I'm Julia Kerr. And I'm Sam Hartanto, and this is Scientists Talk Movies. You and I have known each other for a few years, actually. We've gotten to know each other really well. But for our viewers at home, why don't you start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am a fourth year PhD analytical chemistry student here at UC Davis. I do work with NMR. Um, specifically, that technology is the same as medical MRI, but we do it on like a smaller scale. <laughs> Um, and right now my project has to do with blueberries, which is pretty cool. I get to like try and take, um, you get to eat them images. sometimes like you just, no, because once the, <laughs> once the berries go in the lab, you can't eat food that's, that's that goes good. in the lab. That was, a, that was a test question, by the way. Uh -huh, you, like, totally uh -huh. Not safe for the <laughs> Do you want to tell our the viewers about what research you do? Yeah, so I do a lot of biochemistry and structural biology. So I actually try to like look at protein structure, which is, still blows my mind, even though I do it because proteins are like really, really small. So it's still mind blowing to me that you can see them. Um, but I am also a fourth year uh, PhD candidate in the chemistry department. I have really been interested in science um, since I was really little, like starting around middle school um, was when I started like taking science classes and like learning about science and like what um, humans can learn from it, really. Um, it also didn't help that I was super into Star Trek. That was like around the time that, you know, um, I started watching all these like sci-fi shows and I got really into the original series, kind of lower production value, kind of campy. Um, it was a fun time, but huge inspiration to like middle school me. Um, looking back, you know, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know what was going through my mind, but it was it was really cool to, you know, see all the science they were doing in the show. I put science in quotes because a lot of times it would just be kind of vague, like, oh, we have this little miracle box that can detect all the ailments that's wrong with you and all the diseases that's wrong with you. Um, but yeah, so for me, Star Trek was like, whoa, science, science is really cool. My family is super into sci-fi too. My parents, they said, were super into Star Trek. My dad's favorite fun fact about the original Star Trek is oh. that uh, the technology in Star Trek was actually based like 20 or 30 years in the future, like technology <laughs> that we'd have in, because people wouldn't like believe yeah. technology that was supposed to be out in like 300 years in the future. Oh, yeah. I will, That's I like his story. I think, I think one good example is like the little communicators that they used, um, yeah. they would, like, plug them into the ear, you know, now we have like Bluetooth headsets and everything, so. I was actually talking to my parents about this the other day about how for me watching the original Star Trek now, it's like, wait, we have all that technology. When you walk <laughs> yeah. up to a door, it opens and like you can, right. you have like a phone in your ear and you can yeah. order whatever you want on a screen and there are flat <laughs> screens. And it's kind of like, for me, I've never really thought about it as super futuristic. I know it's supposed to be, but oh. it's kind of crazy how like we're there, like we've advanced mm -hmm. so much. Like that's what the sixties thought was like the future. Cool it was it was here. ahead of its time like that is for sure yeah. um we still don't have like a box that can cure all your ailments or detect all your ailments but maybe fingers crossed yeah are there any movies that you've seen where the science is just like super unbelievable <laughs> oh that is such a good question i feel like that's the cases for most uh, movies and TV shows. I keep thinking about Ant-Man. I don't know if you've seen <laughs> Ant-Man, yes, Julia. And I think um, in a previous episode, actually, of Scientist Talks movies, uh, Kelly and Summer also talked about Ant-Man. Um, and in that movie, you know, they talk a lot about like quantum entanglement um, and like subatomic physics. And you could tell, you know, I really appreciated that they dropped a lot of like the jargon and the lingo, but it really made me wonder, you know, how much of this is stuff that might be reasonable and how much of it is the writers just throwing in words hoping to impress their audiences um overall though i thought it was a good movie i think it's one it's one of my favorite marvel movies with science in a movie um as long as it's something that's like totally not 
like egregiously wrong. But it, like, you know, carbon-based life, sometimes you hear um, people talking about the possibilities of silicon-based life, you know, because silicon's right below carbon. Ant-Man was very interesting to me because they were dropping all these terms that I like vaguely knew and vaguely heard about. But then the other side of me was like, is how much of this is applicable? How much of this is like actually working, you know, uh, with the real science? I try not, I mean, I don't want to get too wound up about it because it is just a movie. Oh, I totally, I totally understand. <laughs> My favorite movie for entertainment value, not of high quality production, <laughs> is Sharknado from like the original sci-fi uh, like channel movie, Sharknado. Yes. Um, yes. I love, I love that. I've watched all of like five of them or whatever. Oh my so, god! Like there's like so many. Oh yes. And like I remember the first time I watched that movie, I was like. People were getting bitten by sharks in like two feet of water. And I grew up in a beach that, town. So like, I was kind of like, that, that that can't happen. Like there can be no great white in a foot and a half of water. That is hilarious. Of, like the Santa Monica coast that just like doesn't happen. There's like a scene where a house was filling up with water from the outside. And then mm-hmm. they cut to an outside shot of the house. <laughs> and it's like, there's no water on the outside and the house like implodes and then water comes out. And I was like, wait a second, we've got <laughs> so many things here. The water's pouring in from the windows on like the top part of the first story. And then we cut outside and there's no water outside. And then like the house is like on the top of the hill. And I I, I remember the, the water was coming out the wrong way. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I just remember being like, it's not like just like trying to explain to my friends. I was like, that is not how wow. science works. <laughs> and my friends and I, we just like watched that movie and mm-hmm. laughed so hard. Well, there's also <laughs> the glaring oversight of sharks in a tornado. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's that one too. Like, I think that that is. <laughs> yeah. You're, you, I, I really appreciate the the writers and and the producers of Sharknado for, if anything, sticking to this concept that they obviously so deeply care about that they bothered to make not just one movie, but uh, apparently up to five movies. Science just keeps getting better. I mean, spoilers (laughs) for anyone who hasn't seen the second Sharknado. Your audio if you care deeply about Sharknado. At one point, Tara (laughs) Reid has a baby inside a shark that's like in space or something like that and there are sharks oh they go to space and then there are like tornadoes and like it it gets it gets even better it's a gold mine of science fiction julia have you ever seen it sounds like you would love this movie it's from the 90s it's called tremors Mm -mm. and it's a very it's kind of the same lines so it's a very campy sci-fi comedy movie i won't spoil it but it's about essentially these giant sand creatures that come up and terrorize this small desert town. It's hilarious. I watched it not too long ago. But one of the main characters in the movie is actually a geology grad student who's trying to work on her thesis and she's trying to collect seismograph data. It was kind of cool to see, you know, she's out there doing field research. And at one point she um, explains to the other non-scientist characters like, hey, I'm a grad student. You know, I'm out here doing field research for my thesis. And I'm like, I feel you. And I was so excited to see a grad student in a movie. I felt like we were really being represented. Yeah, you'll be laughing um, with the movie. The movie itself is funny, but you'll also be laughing at kind of the production value. So definitely check it out. Sounds like a movie I'd like. I divulged that Sharknado is my favorite movie. What's your favorite movie, Sam? Ooh, it is actually, so one of my favorite movies um, is actually Contact, trying to stick with the theme. And I think Contact is... I would argue it's much better done than Sharknado. No offense, Julia. <laughs> Can't really um, argue there. <laughs> yeah. But I, so I, the first time I saw Contact um, was again in, it was either middle school or early, um, early high school. And it, this goes back to, to um, instilling that kind of curiosity uh, because it's really what Contact does. And I think Contact is a great movie for that. Um, I think the science behind Contact is, Um, It's based on the book by Carl Sagan. And I think when he wrote the book, he tried to make the science a bit more accurate. It does a really good job of capturing more of the human aspect um, of not only 
what it feels to do research, what it what it feels like to grapple, you know, with a research question to be chasing something. Um, but I think also it's just what scientists as humans deal with. Um, the main character um, in the movie, I think she has a lot of, she goes through a lot of growth and a lot of experience in that regard. Um, I think Contact is a really well done movie. Hey, Julia, do you have any gripes about the way that science is represented or maybe misrepresented in movies? Um, yeah, I, I struggle with like remembering the exact things because they like make me angry, but that's not how that works. Um, and uh, what really gets me is in like um, procedural shows or like, uh, like case shows. My family, we called them dead people shows when I was growing up, like CSI, NCIS, mm -hmm. like all the shows like Psych or whatever, like the shows where someone dies and you're trying to like find the murder or whatever. Yeah. Like it would always like bug me. The forensics was like, oh, we found this like one piece of something or like this piece of hair that like doesn't have the follicle on it. And we like found their <laughs> DNA. And I was like, what? I like don't think that's how that worked. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. definitely been the, dramatized. Yeah. yeah. My the the phrase willing suspension of disbelief was used a lot with my family when I was ruining the magic of a movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can't break the immersion. In their, yeah. you know, in their defense, they're trying to get this done in like one hour. So yeah, yeah. But yeah uh, science is a process. I think that that is probably the biggest thing that's kind of glossed over in shows and movies. You know, it, it takes time. You don't just like hold a test tube up to the light and say, I've got it. I've got it. No. <laughs> The only, the only other like big gripe I remember, it wasn't me, but my lab mates when Wonder Woman came out a couple years ago, for weeks, they were complaining about the science. They were complaining about, I think they said that they, the science that they were trying to push in the movie was that they were trying to replace carbon in carbon-based life forms or something with hydrogen, which you Ooh. can't do for those people who aren't a chemist. Carbon mm -hmm. has four bonds. Hydrogen, on the other hand, can only make one bond. So if you took out That's a carbon and replaced it with a hydrogen. Severely be, limiting. <laughs> yeah. It just, the science doesn't pan out super well. Yeah. I don't see it working I either. I don't see it. I distinctly remember them complaining about it for weeks. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're going to give Marvel, the Marvel Studios, <laughs> the benefit of the doubt. Superhero movies, the benefit yeah. of the doubt. Have you seen any other Marvel movies? Do you have any gripes with Marvel movies, Sam? One of the Marvel movies that I really like, in addition to, you know, I talked about Ant-Man. That was a really cool movie. I also really like Captain Marvel, but one of the biggest issues that I have is that she's kind of just floating through space. How does she breathe? You know, how, do, how does she breathe? She's got, I guess, her suit, you know, but in all of all of the she's shots, like, all of the scenes, she can just kind of travel through space. And I guess it's this whatever sort of magical alien miasma that she's been imbued with. That like glow. The, the like glow coming off of her skin or whatever. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Stops you know, the spaceships in their tracks. I guess I that, remember. you know, that's that's what gives her powers because you know another spoil like another spoiler alert so if you haven't seen captain marvel it turns out she is just human right she's like one of us um and obviously we can't survive in space um i wish science could give me that superpower like yeah, her hair looks like fabulous being a scientist though, when she's, yeah being a when scientist makes floating, my hair look fabulous in space yeah. yeah when she's floating in space her hair is amazing you know um i want that superpower yeah. honestly <laughs> like I don't even need to breathe in space just give me like hair that looks awesome um <laughs> in yeah. space yeah as uh, well as in atmosphere <laughs> that is a big kind of like you know all the shots I I see of her floating through space it's kind of like just rolling my eyes it's like all right one of my gripes I mean while we're still on this topic um mm -hmm. it's not marvel related but in a lot of shows that do have like labs in them like forensic labs or chemistry labs oftentimes you'll have scientists holding a micro pipetter which lets you pipette you know small amounts amounts less than one milliliter of fluid and those micro pipetters are meant to be used with um disposable pipette tips and oftentimes i'll see um a scientist not use a disposable pipette tip. They're just pipetting directly into the pipetter, which you're not supposed to do. It's sort of like using like a syringe without a needle, right? You need both of those parts. And so I, my friends are always sending me like screen caps from various shows, you know, like, oh, here's another naked pipetter, you know, 
Here's another. So I remember, I mean, it got to the point where I remember I was watching an episode of Sherlock. This was from BBC. There's this one scene where the title character, Sherlock, he is working in a lab and he is using a micro pipetter and he has the tip on, he has the disposable plastic tip on. And I saw that and I was like, so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, he's using a pipetter properly. That really solidified like how much I like that show. You know, not only is it a great show, but they, the writers and the producers took their time to research how to use a micro pipetter. Huge points in my book. So there are actually like a number of shows that have like PhDs on the writing staff. I think I read somewhere that like really? the Big Bang Theory had like multiple like oh, wow. math PhDs or like science mm-hmm. PhDs. My dad was a physicist. Um, mm-hmm. and oh, that's cool. He, yeah, that's what he studied. And so he would always like explain to me the different like physics topics that they were joking about <laughs> or referencing. Nice. So there were definitely like some physics topics that I learned like from that show. I remember like the first time I learned about Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, talking to my dad about it, being like, what is this? I didn't get it. Are there were there any like TV shows like specifically that you watched a lot that you like watched kind of or like liked the science or kind of influenced you science wise when you're younger? Um I watched a lot of Star Trek in middle school. Um, specifically the original series. <clears throat> um and I a lot of the science in that show is a little hand wavy. Um, but I think that it helped really instill this curiosity about what science can do. Um, obviously this is Star Trek, so they are, you know, in space meeting a bunch of different aliens and other life forms, really that curiosity of, you know, what's out there, how much do we know as humans? Like how much do we know? How much don't we know? You know, and, um, how can we, how can we try to figure out what we don't know? I mean, that's like mm-hmm. what we do every day as scientists, yeah. right? It's like, what's the thing that people haven't studied using like this technique before? Mm-hmm. Like what have people not mm-hmm. done? How can we like push this further? Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for chatting with me, Sam. This has been actually a, like a lot of fun. Well, I knew yeah. it would be fun talking with you. <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah, well, it was my pleasure, Julia. And thank you to all the viewers that tuned in today. Make sure to check out the next episode of Scientists Talk Movies. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.